to start a video on uh, repairing the crash damage on my 1949 Chevy pickup. And uh, we're also changing the rear suspension from parallel leaf springs to a uh, aftermarket trailing arm suspension, which is similar to what Chevrolet did on the C10s of the late 60s, early 70s. Uh, so anyway, I have uh, gotten the old rear end out and the springs out and I've cut the exhaust uh, out from under the truck. I'll have to go back and redo some of that, I'm sure, when the trailing arms are back in. And I just decided it was easier to get it out of the way for now. And the new cross member is going to go somewhere in this vicinity. And we'll go all the way across. It'll have a drive shaft loop in it. And then it'll have uh, trailing arms that go back to the rear end. And looks like I'm going to have to do boxing plates on the frame. I've still got a few little cross members and stuff to take out. But anyway, I've got most of the uh, crash damage parts out and you can see very clearly that it did bend the rear end housing. So I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do here. If I'm going to uh, uh, cut this one off and put tubes on it and fix it or buy a new one, um, do some upgrades, just not real sure. Um, I am going to convert over to rear disc brakes and I've got a brake kit ordered that's for the, uh, this is a small bearing 9 inch and the brake kit's for a large bearing 9 inch so kind of need to upgrade to that anyway I mean with this being a pickup truck I've run this rear end for about 15 years and uh, it, it's worked okay and I've done a lot of hauling with it and a lot of towing with it uh, but it's a little bit hard on rear wheel bearings and I'm guessing that's because it's got the car size bearing so probably be a good time to go ahead and upgrade that and I could cut these tubes off and um, put new tubes on it and new big bearing ends and I might do that because I've got uh, uh, I think it may have bent the axle it's standing over there in the corner uh, but I've got a, a spare set of axles for this rear end so I don't know I'm not real sure I gotta figure out what to, what to do but Anyway, that's where we're at so far, and I'll try to document this as I go. Okay, so we have our boxing plates almost finished, so we can begin our installation of the uh, trailing arm rear suspension. Still got to do a little piece right up here and tie that in. You can see over here we got that tied in and uh, basically what this does is originally the truck was designed to have the load points at the front and the back where the leaf springs go because you have cross members front and back and so by boxing this section of the frame we basically are, are going to be transferring our load to a cross member here that goes across and that's going to hold the coilover shocks and all the weight of the truck and whatever you're hauling will be transferred then through this boxed part of the frame rails to all the factory strong points on the frame. So like I said, we just got a few things to finish up there and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, um, we decided if you saw earlier in the video how the rear end was bent and uh, we actually decided we'd just go ahead and fix that rear end. So I had some uh, quarter inch wall, three inch pipe here and we just cut the rear end off at the center section joint, put new tubes on it, new ends and uh, we're just gonna go with this and it came out nice. I'll show you uh, kind of what you're after when you put the, uh, so you've got an alignment bar that goes through there. Now this is a, this is a home built alignment fixture and that's a, an old center section that's got some custom machine pucks in place of the bearings. And I've got a piece of, uh, it's like an inch and three eighths, three eighths wall tubing, really straight and strong that passes all the way through the rear end. It passes through the center uh, bushings 
uh, where the original bearings were, and then you've got the pucks on the ends. And you've got to make sure that thing stays straight or you'll have problems. So let me show you kind of what the end result needs to be. Okay, so here's what we've got. We've got our bar and our puck. And when you're done, you gotta be able to spin that bar. That tells you that you're straight all the way through the center and to the other side. So your axles will be perfectly aligned with the uh, bearings in the center chunk. Got our puck right here, and I can take it with one hand, push it right in place of the bearing. I mean, you just couldn't ask for it to be much straighter than that, so I don't think we'll have any issue with it. And uh, we went ahead and upgraded this housing to the uh, large outer bearing, and we've got a disc brake kit for it. And I'm gonna reuse my center section and my old axles Actually, I had a spare set of axles because I think I bent uh, bent one of the axles in the wreck. So I'm just going to take the spare axles I've got and put the new bearings on them and put them in. So the next step is we're going to be starting to mock up the No Limit Engineering uh, trailing arm kit. But I needed to get this housing finished first because you got to have it when you do the mock up. So that'll be the next step. Okay, here we've got our... Uh, Trailing arm suspension mocked up. Uh, this is a kit from No Limit Engineering in uh, Dan Dandridge, Tennessee. Uh, I'm very impressed with the quality of their parts. Nice, heavy trailing arms. Everything fits just great. We've uh, uh, got it mocked up, squared up, measured front to back. Um, we've got angle finder. Uh, you can go ahead and set the pinion angle one degree up and do all of that before it even goes in the truck because they've got this kit um, engineered and they know where it needs to be. So next step is we're gonna tack weld our perches in and then take it all back apart and then start uh, mocking it up in the truck. Okay, so here's where we are on the repair of the 49. We've got the replacement fender on and uh, everything fit pretty good. And uh, this wheel and tire here is just temporary. I'm still waiting on a replacement. Uh, this is where we just kind of straightened the one that was damaged enough to get a tire on it and do it as a roller. And we've got our rear suspension in. Disc brakes. Still got to do the emergency brake cables. And you can see Got our trailing arms. Cross member up front. Everything fit really good on this kit. I would highly recommend the uh, No Limit Engineering for any of their stuff. If their fit and finish is like this on all their stuff, it's really good. And if you can see it up here, we ran our brake lines inside the trailing arms see where they come out the top and then I've got short rubber lines going over to the frame split off and then they follow down and come out here and go up and connect so it's actually a kind of a neat neat application so see from this side we did make a change on the panter bar. The panter bar was supposed to go on the back and ended up putting it on the front. And uh, yes, it does clear the third member. We checked it at full compression up on the stops without uh, any shocks on it and made sure we had clearance. And uh, we did these uh, off-road Johnny joints, which give a lot more articulation than just the bushings that come with the kit. That's the only only thing that I could see to even improve their kit. I mean, their, their stuff was just great. And really the modification for this wasn't too bad. I had to modify this top bracket and, and then change one end on the pattern bar. But you can see I've got a um, crank down spare tire back here and there wasn't room really for a pattern bar in the back. And I like it better in the front anyway, since it did clear. So anyway, that's where we're at. We've still got to 
finish up a lot of little details. We got to build the exhaust. That's going to be fun. And uh, do emergency brake cables and tie up a few lines and fittings and so forth. And then we can uh, do some body work. And uh, I still got to finish up my transmission install I did a few weeks ago. We converted this over to an AOD. All of this is new. And I've got a, a cooler over here that hasn't been wired. The fan hasn't been wired yet. The cooler's hooked up. But uh, anyway, we uh, kind of got sidetracked by wrecking the truck. So that's where we're at, and uh, we'll continue on. Okay, so we rolled the truck out of the shop and just uh, went down the road and back to check the brakes and see if anything felt weird. And uh, I think we're going to be okay. Just want to get it out and see how the ride height looks. A little bit sunny today. But we're pretty close to where it needs to be. Around on this side, maybe the sun won't be so bad. That's about back where it was with the leaf springs. That's one thing I wanted. Uh, one thing I liked about going with the trailing arm and the coilover shocks is uh, I'd be able to get my ride height back where it was because I was real happy the way this truck was with the leaf springs. And, uh, it may need to come up just a touch in the back, but again, we've got plenty of adjustment. So I think we're going to be good. Um, I think I may just finish this video up. There's really not a whole lot else to show that would be interesting. There's a lot of little details, and of course, we've got some body work. And things to do we got to fix this tail light and replace that bumper at some point but we'll be back on the road soon so i think i'll just call it quits on this video and uh, we'll move on to other things so i appreciate everybody watching